Hey everybody, today I'd like to share 5 tips and tricks with you with that you can improve your pictures by a lot and really bring them to the next level without spending much time, spending much money at all and the best thing, you can do it right now, today! And this video was made possible by MacFun Luminar. If you want to edit your pictures, you should definitely take a look at Luminar. A link to a 14 day free trial will be in the video description below. So the first one right here, you see that cool After Effects, whatever. Okay, so the first one is going to be shallow depth of field. I'm sure you've seen it a lot online from other photographers where you just have your subject that is sharp in focus, but everything in the background, everything around it is just blurry and in a really nice and beautiful way. This is actually very easy to do. You just want to go to your widest aperture, so the lowest f-stop, and also you want to zoom in as much as possible. And with that, you can just focus on your subject and you will automatically have a lot more background blur. Your pictures will look so much better and whether it is like a toy car or even even trash, if you, if you want to photograph that, or you know, a portrait or whatever, it looks so much more professional, so much better, and it's so easy to do. Now, the wider your aperture, the shallower of a depth of field you will get, the more blur, but these lenses might be very expensive and even with like a kit lens right here, you can actually get some really nice results because all of these pictures that I show you were actually taken with that kit lens. Alright, so let's go to the second one right here and that is uh, angle of view. And angle of view is something not quite as popular or as well known. Okay, so let me just show you. If you shoot a picture with a very wide angle lens, so this one is at 18 millimeters right now, you can go close to your subject. Your subject in the foreground will look very big. But then you can see also that there's a ton of stuff on the sides and above and below. And you know, that might just be what you want for like a landscape. But a lot of times, zooming in a little bit and just moving backwards while still keeping your main subject at the same size will greatly, greatly change the way your whole background and how much of the side you will actually capture. So the more you zoom in, the more narrow it will become and it's really, it's a very valuable thing. So if you want to shoot a, a bench, for example, and you want to have it very big and have all of the landscape in it, then you probably want to shoot it very wide, go close to the bench. But if you want to have it very focused and really be all about the bench, then you want to have your lens as telephoto as possible and just move away. So your subject still stays the same size, but all of the background is way more compressed. You lose all of that, you know, all of that stuff on the sides. It's a really powerful thing. You can, of course, also do anything in between. And it's something that I use all the time. A lot of times I want to have, for example, a landscape. I want to have a lot in my shot, but I still want to have these mountains in the background seem a little bit bigger. And that's, by the way, also a thing. If you shoot wide, then your foreground subject will look very big, but your background will look quite small. So if you want to have like a huge mountain in the background and still be able to show that size, zooming in a bit will work a lot better, even if you combine that with a foreground subject. So angle of view is something very extremely important and it is not much talked about at all. So definitely consider it the next time you're taking a shot. So let's go to number, number three right here and that is going to be composition and mostly leading lines. Now composition, of course, how you frame your picture, how you compose everything, your elements in the frame, you want to have it as interesting, as good as possible. And it's really something for itself, an entire different video. But a thing that is not as commonly known again is just leading lines. Now what could act as a leading line could really be anything. It could be a road, it could be a bench, it could be a tree branch, a fall down tree, it could be a path, it could be power lines or rails. It could be anything at all that resembles some kind of line that either brings you through the picture or brings you into the picture. And if you will combine that and use a leading line to get you to your actual main subject of the photo, then it will really draw you into the picture much more. It will be much more powerful and just look much more, yeah, much more professional overall. 
Now there's a whole bunch of different things about leading lines, the shapes and from where to where in which order. It's you know a science for itself and again maybe another video if you would like to see that let me know down in the comments. Alright so let's move on to step number num number four right here which is which is lighting. And the thing is a lot of people who get a camera first of all will think well the more I light I have the more sun the better. But that's not very true at all. So if you go out and shoot in mid daylight with a lot of sun especially you will notice very quick that your pictures will be very harsh, kind of boring in terms of the light, it's just it doesn't look as great. And that's really the thing. If you have diffused light, soft light from cloudy overcast days or even better like colorful light from sunsets, sunrises together with awesome cloud structures and different colors in the clouds if you're shooting landscapes at least. But you know, no matter what you shoot, you will usually get a much more professional looking and a much better effect if you just shoot it during an overcast day or again sunset, sunrise, just whenever you have at least a little bit of diffused light. Now that doesn't mean that you cannot get any good pictures in harsh sunny daylight at all but it's gonna be a lot more difficult and you know sometimes if you're shooting like black and white landscapes that might just be exactly what you're looking for for the very harsh shadows. But speaking for the vast majority of the cases uh, most of the time you probably want to have very diffused light or colorful light or just something that is not direct and harsh and blinding. Uh, yeah so during those days shoot at sunrise, go back home, edit some pictures, watch some YouTube videos uh, preferably mine of course, and then go back out at sunset and shoot again. But definitely the more sun, the more harsh light you have is not, definitely not necessarily the best thing at all. And that moves us to num num number five right here, yeah. Maybe also kind of boring, but it is extremely important and can help you a lot. So that is just stabilization. And stabilization you might think of like a tripod immediately. And certainly a tripod is in my opinion one of the best investments that you can make after buying a lens and a camera because you can do so much with it. You can do long exposures, just leave your camera on it for like half a minute, get that awesome movement in the sky. You can compose your landscapes a lot better, you can shoot that low ISO during night, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's really an awesome tool with that you can buy a whole lot, but if you're buying a tripod then I would recommend you to spend a little bit more than like 10 or 20 dollars if you're getting it new. I bought some cheap tripods, they all failed and not to say that you have to spend hundreds but you know just spending a little bit more might really get you a much better quality tripod and by the way you know tripods are available even for phones i got one right here that i use sometimes or you can also buy it used on ebay or like my tripod which i'm shooting this on which i bought at a thrift shop for literally ten dollars this one works surprisingly well is surprisingly sturdy and has awesome up and down movement with the camera heads for a very smooth video now in terms of bringing up and down the center column it's not the most amazing thing but point is, you can get some awesome deals uh, used and if you're buying something new, you should probably spend a little bit more. But that's actually not what I wanted to talk about mainly. But the actual thing that I wanted to talk about is just, is just stabilization like with your hands. Now, first thing that you can do is very simple, is just have your hands on this lens, you know, just like that. That way you will have a much more stable grip and much less shaky pictures than if you would just grab it like this. Now if you want to take that a little bit further, you can actually put your camera into a 2 second delay mode, which means that if you press the shutter it will take 2 seconds until it takes the picture, and then just push your camera against your body. So that way you will have it even more steady and you know if you use that together you use the shutter delay you hold your camera very steady like this and then you press it against your body, perhaps even, even have a very solid sand if you want, then that can really make a huge difference and increase your yeah, just reduce shake and increase your stabilization by like three stops. And something very easy to do and something, again, very effective. And another thing I wanted to talk about real quick is actually photo editing. Photo editing can really do a lot for you, open up a lot of possibilities and, you know, creative adjustments. And of course there are a lot of programs and software and apps out there 
but only one is sponsoring this video. No, but it's seriously an awesome program. You have all of the usual sliders that you will also find in Lightroom and stuff, but it has a lot of advanced features. And the cool thing about it is that you can use it either as a standalone program and edit a picture from start to finish in it, or just use it as a Lightroom plugin, which I prefer to use it as. So you have different adjustment layers, so you can you know, use different adjustments on different layers and then use local adjustments on these layers. You can work with different blending modes. You can even replace skies very kind of quick and very easily. Uh, you have the Orton effect and just a bunch of different adjustments that I think personally are really cool. And if that all sounds interesting to you, you can actually check out the link in the video description and you will get a 14 day free trial. You can try out everything, edit some pictures and, you know, decide for yourself if you like it. So that's been pretty much the five tips I want to share with you guys. Now it's the first time I'm doing this kind of format, so I definitely hope you find it helpful. Let me know about it, liking, disliking, doing whatever. But uh, that way I can see if you guys actually enjoyed it and I might do some more in the future. Before I actually end this, you know, I was talking about stabilization and stuff. So I figured why not go out into the city and show you some real advanced stabilization.